I'm Emily Moshek, and you are listening to Tuned Into NoCo, Town Square Media's public affairs show that lets you know what matters in NoCo. I'm sitting down today with Marisol Jackson, the executive director of New Hope Youth Ranch. So thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Of course. Now, for those who aren't familiar, what is New Hope Youth Ranch? Uh, it is such a big vision and project for uh, Northern Colorado to serve Larimer and Weld counties. And so we are building a very large facility. Um, I, and the way I like to explain it to people um, is ask them first, are you familiar with St. Jude's Research Hospital in Memphis? And most people are. And that campus and facility is magnificent in what they've accomplished and done as far as serving people with cancer and blood disorders through nonprofit funding so that they never get a bill. And so what we're building is on that same premise and vision and model is a facility to serve people with mental health, uh, disabilities, behavioral health, all the special needs on that same principle of getting alternative therapies, having respite care, and not receiving a bill, but reaching them in the hour of crisis. Mm -hmm. So it is a monumental project. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's great to hear. Would you be able to break it down a little bit more for me? Who are the people that you serve? So the people um, that we'll be serving, um, so as we build phase one, we're looking at doing group homes, uh, teen pregnancy home, a year-round school that's individually uh, taught. It's not classroom taught. It's an individual base taught. And um, a f old West Fairway that will have therapeutic services. So is it music therapy, aqua therapy, um, art therapy, all these alternative therapies within it. And that really it will be our foundation for um, our phase one and uh, 18 and under. So as clients come to us, often families are in need and maybe they don't go in through the foster care system but they're in crisis or there's a severe disability that needs uh, a special school. Um, those are clients that we will be serving. Mm -hmm. uh, young teens that are pregnant um, want to finish school in a voc ed program, but the challenges usually are massive medical appointments or um, with a young mother, there's baby duty that offsets a, a traditional classroom. And so with our school, um, which is individually based taught. Um, they can come in at different seasons of what they're going through, and they can spend more time with alternative therapies and a little bit less academics. And then as the need for therapy lessens, we um, implement more academics. And so you're helping people in crisis yes. as well as people with mental disabilities? Yes. Um, well, often children that um, are referred to us are struggling, um, whether it's in school or in the family semantics or um, even those that have attempted suicide. Um, so as they come to us, there's a crisis that's happened. And um, again, some people are beyond the scope of being able to get mental health services, whether it's finances or um, they don't meet the program requirements or there's no bed available that's a huge one ha that happens in our area. Um, and I, I really just believe all over the nation, there's just not enough beds available to help people in their hour of crisis. And so families will come to us and ask for assistance and whether um, we do the school um, as they live offsite or they live on site. Um, so say um, a family is struggling with a young person and they need more services to figure out do they have a mental health disability? Is it like autism or bipolar? Do they need medicines? And the struggle is intense and the parents need a break. So then the child will come to us for a month, four months, six months as we work through this process and um, help get them regulated with medicines and doctors. And then uh, maybe it's a learning style that has to change. So all of those pieces, and then we also work with the family as they work to reconcile back together. So that's one example of a client that would um, come to us as we try to help. And a lot of services are available in our community, but they all have program limitations. So either there's not enough room or someone 
there's not an availability. Um, getting a bed at the hospital has certain requirements for mental health issues or um, uh, for suicide attempts. And those are all very severe gravity issues that take place. Mm-hmm. So it's really individualized for it a patient. Is. It is. And, and some of the other uh, things that I've talked about with local officers is sometimes the family um, dynamic has a lot of um, aggression or uh, conflict that they answer a call and do a conflict resolution or de-escalation call, but then they can't go on to the next service. Again, they don't meet the program requirements, and so they continually return to the home for calls. And so how do we help our families in the intervention piece? And so that's what we hope to be able to do. Yeah, break down those barriers that people face as they try to progress. Yes, yes. Now you are serving so many people, clearly, and hoping to serve many people. You have a lot of different programs to help do this. You kind of mentioned the school and different types of therapy. Can you tell me a little bit more about those? Um, So I did uh, speak briefly about the school. It's a a private curriculum that I've been familiar with for about 25 years, but I've also taught in the public schools. And so one thing that I see is uh, children that have either a special need or uh, a mental health illness or those challenges do better with hands-on learning. And so what I love about the design of the school is the individual base. So say we have um, a child that comes to us struggling in school, being bullied, um, and they have some learning challenges. And it could be an autism piece. It could be um, they don't read at grade level. They're far below grade level. And so um, what we would do is we um, bring that young person in and evaluate the situation. And then they're still a fourth grader even if they have to do first grade reading, and then they may be brilliant in math. And so the levels are adjusted just for them and it's self-paced. So every Monday we would have a field trip day or a community service day. So rotating between the two because I just really am a firm believer that hands-on learning is imperative um, for children. And and I've worked in the school districts for 25 years as well in each uh, location that I've lived in. So this is not a uh, idea in theory. These are pretty much all of my my life work brought together um, through the different nonprofits I've had and being built as one main project. Mm-hmm. So that that would be the school. And you have a year to deal with um, uh, different issues. So a lot of times in a in a trauma or in a crisis, um, the The children are removed from the home, put in a new family, and then go back to school. And what really needs to happen is they are being affirmed, that the root cause is being addressed, that we take more time to reach those issues. I don't know how many of us personally have that experience of being in a crisis as a young person and just wishing the world would stop, like wishing our parents would stop, the world would stop, nobody had to go to jobs, that we could just deal with the issue. And I think in in young people's minds of the black and white of how things are because there's not that gray area yet but um being able to help affirm them and overcome that and if we can help achieve that and whether it's through different therapies that speak to that child because we know talk therapy isn't everybody's and especially in a trauma people don't want to talk about it and so are they connecting in equine therapy or animal husbandry or is it garden or is it music are they expressing themselves and as we help them with these therapies, which are more tangible than psychiatric meds and some other protocols, um, are they able to overcome and and find a way to self-regulate through each crisis? And that's really the goal is changing how we address these issues. And so when we think about a third world project and we can give in charity but then the third world country has not overcome their social issue. But if we give a set of tools with education, now we've gone along the side of them to help them learn how to overcome. And with a lot of things with mental health or uh, disabilities that don't have cures, it's not about curing somebody or healing them. It's about overcoming and learning a set of tools to self-regulate and have balance. And so is it um, medicine? Uh, is it aqua therapy um, or is it music 
for that person. And a lot of people, especially within the spectrum, um, do well with animal husbandry or equine therapy, so the animal-assisted therapies. So all of those are significant pieces. And so if we address that there, will it break the generational cycle when they're older? As they become adults and then they have children, will those situations that are often um, uh, in our community, which are either homelessness or poverty or recidivism, will they be broken because now we helped in an extraordinary way when they were younger? And giving hope. That's what New Hope's about is just giving hope. We're not curing. Yeah. We're giving hope and a whole set of way to do something a little bit different. Yeah. It's a really big picture approach to how you're looking at <laughs> mental health, which I like. It's something you don't hear that often. I have to ask, how did you come to be in this spot? What brought you to do this? Um, great question. I So we all have a personal story. We all have a history or a personal story of whether um, a family member that we know that has a mental health illness or has uh, a suicide attempt or has actually committed suicide. And I think some of us fall in the all above category. Um, but... I actually have been at St. Jude's Research Hospital. I have two daughters that were patients there, and um, my one has no cure. And so being there at St. Jude's and seeing this phenomenal facility where everybody is treated with equality, I think it's really what our government aspires for in, in medical care but fails to achieve. And here are these kids that are having brain surgeries. They don't have cures. They, they have a terminal illness. And yet they're joyful and they're laughing and they're happy. And there's just a spirit when you get on campus there. I know a lot of radio stations does the radiothon. And that's how we, how we actually came to that place was hearing the radiothon. And we're like, ah, let's call. And within one week's time, she was there getting her first treatment. She was left in her normal children's hospital to die, and here she was getting a treatment that was non-traditional. It wasn't what the government normally pays for. Um, and so after being there for two years um, and seeing the how extraordinary it, it gave my daughter life, I was like, why can't we do this for mental health and those with disabilities? Why can't we serve people and raise them up in their gifting and um, help them be the very best they can be by applying these uh, principles. And so I've had two other nonprofits. Um, and so like our garden project in Arkansas and uh, Paper Angels, which is feeding the homeless and serving the homeless. So as we combined a lot of those pieces, um, that's kind of how this came about. But it's inspiring that you're able to do that. I'm sure it's been inspiring for you as well on the way, like you said, you were inspired by seeing St. Jude's and how they worked there. Since you've started New Hope, what has been inspiring you? Or do you have any stories of things that have really stuck with you since you began? Um, so the journey began more than a year ago. And I, there's lots of stories. I love connecting to people and hearing their stories because everybody has one. Um, and just hearing their personal um, effects, how it affected them. And um, one of the things that uh, we're doing in phase two, which really needs to be built immediately, is a long-term respite medical facility. And um, when, I, when I look at families struggling in public um, and I see that exhausted mom that's caregiving for their daughter in a wheelchair or that's nonverbal autistic son, and my heart really goes to them because I've been there in those places where... You just want someone to lift the burden off of you long enough for a vacation or to be able to do something. And so for me personally, I um, hadn't had a vacation away from my five children in like 17 years. And I remember um, being here in this community and um, a, a multidisciplinary team came around me and said, what do you need? And I, I was very honest. I said, I need a vacation. And I need someone to be able to watch my kids who had special needs. So I needed someone who could really understand and serve them. And there were five of them, so there was a lot. <laughs> um, and I just remember within two days, I flew out for a vacation. And it just came together that fast. And I was rejuvenated. I felt better. And it really just was taking off that weight of me for just like four days. 
so I could breathe and then come back. And it wasn't that I didn't want to be the mom or the caregiver. It was just I was overwhelmed and exhausted and, and had to get that piece. And so in phase two of our building, um, which people can look up on site, on our website, is a long-term respite medical facility and partial independent living for disabled adults. So those pieces are really important, and, and I really want to speak to those because we do have great crisis centers for mental health, for, um, uh, for addictions, and for, um, for when people are in crisis and need med adjustments. And those are great. I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm doing is that next step. Where do they go after that if they don't finish the regulation that they need or they need extended respite? Um, what about the family that is just exhausted and they go into a local nonprofit or church and they're just, they're done. And we reach out to them and the case manager calls me up and says, hey, Marisol, do you have a bed? And um, I'll say, for how long? And they'll say, well, this family really needs a vacation for a week or 10 days or it, th this uh, mother that has an adult child um, is suffering from cancer and they need treatment, but there's no one else. Um, what does that look like? Do we have that opening for long-term care? And those are a lot of places I feel like people get, we get stuck. And, and then who, because Medicaid dictates a lot of payment, you have to have a facility, facility that is certified. So you can't just say, oh yeah, my friend down the street's gonna watch them and I'm gonna go. That just doesn't happen. Or how about our foster care parents that are doing foster care and they need respite time? Um, so as those respite, current med medical respite facilities fill up, then what do we do? And so I, uh, again, I can apply a personal story where uh, one of my daughters um, has to have full-time um, care as an adult. And um, one of the agencies I'd reached out to didn't get back to me for almost nine months. Well, it, we were working on paperwork, but for Medicaid to certify everything, it took nine months. And I was just looking at the case manager going, we need it today. Yeah, She needs the care today, not nine months down the road. And just the system, systematic errors that are happening um, in our system. And so I want to create something as extravagant and extraordinary as New Hope, or St. Jude's Research Hospital and, and have a model that we are doing in our community together and then go back to Congress and say, look, we have a successful model. Can we change how our Medicaid and our insurance systems pay mental health and those with disabilities? Can we change this? Because a lot of these um, alternative therapies are tangible and they're cheaper than big farm medicine. And I mean, that's a huge political debate for many people. And People have different roads of what they believe. Not everybody wants psychiatric meds. And so is there a balance, a natural balance that can be achieved? Again, you are listening to Town Square Media's Tuned Into NOCO, your public affairs show that lets you know what matters in NOCO. I'm Emily Moshak, and I'm sitting down with Marisol Jackson, the executive director of New Hope Youth Ranch, which provides hope and options for families in Larimer and Weld counties with special needs, medical fragility, disabilities, and crisis situations. So there's so many things coming up. You kind of touched on all of them. But just in the next year, in 2020, what are we looking at for New Hope Youth Ranch? So New Hope Youth Ranch, we get a lot of client referrals that come into us. And we love to be able to help them. And as we talked about a little bit earlier, um, nonprofits help in a limited way. But then there's the cases that are just extraordinary. That How do we get to that next level? Um, they don't need the jail, they don't need uh, foster care, but they're on the brink of crisis. And so how do we help navigate them through that? And so that really is our expertise in this hour. So in 2020, we're doing capital campaign fundraising to be able to build. And we're in land negotiations right now. We don't have a site already, but uh, as we have been offered some land and are raising funds to build our project, and again, it really, we can't build it fast enough. No matter what we do, we do have our architectural designs, which are phenomenal um, in the project. And we have a project manager over that, but we do need to have land. And then we think about um, infrastructure to serve the, 
the two counties. So building near I-25, preferably um, North Loveland or South Fort Collins, because now we can serve everyone. And then when the families go back, they can, uh, when, when the children are reconciled or um, as they age out of our voc ed program or um, work off site, they're able to network back into local nonprofits to continue the care that they need uh, in, in their networking there. Um, so the other really cool thing about 2020 is we have an office location now to serve clients. Um, so that will be remarkable as well. And that is at the Community Life Center in Loveland. And I can give the address if you like. Yes, yes, please. Okay, <laughs> it's, it's um, 1511 East 11th Street, um, Loveland. And that community life center has many uh, nonprofits within it and agencies like DHS is also there um, to help navigate. And like I said, we are that next level. Our specialty is really helping um, find out what the actual uh, disability or issue is and then connecting them personally to those doctors. So I make the referrals, um, I make the connections if they need me to drive them to the courthouse and work on guardianship paperwork. Is it a child custody issue? Is it um, social security? That is a massive issue. And there's a lot of programs that people don't realize are available um, um, under those needs and working through disability. Sometimes people come to us, we have a one client already um, that's been with us for uh, quite a long time, this 2019, that's in medical crisis. And it's navigating the many different specialists and the Social Security and the attorney um, because Social Security likes to deny people even if they have a valid um, disability. And so, again, what is New Hope about? We want to give hope. We want to carry and help them believe that there is light at the end of that tunnel. It will get better. Um, we'll walk right there with them. I'm so excited to hear what's coming in 2020. I'm so excited to hear see it grow. Now, so if people want to get involved with New Hope or if they need New Hope, would that office be where they would reach out to? Yes. Um, well, our website has all our information. So definitely tech, check out our website at newhopeyouthranch.org. And so our contact information's on there. You can have You can send client referrals that way. Um, emailing is great. You can keep up on kind of like what our changes are happening. So we have the building phases on there. Um, we have end of year giving available um, on our website. You can donate directly on the site. Um, but if anybody wants to write a $20,000 check, please see me personally. I'd love <laughs> to meet you. Um, we also put a wish list out there. So um, New Hope, New Ranch, we have a, a facility that is... Um, holding, we have a storage unit holding our donations that are coming in. So our library program is going to be really big on campus. So we have someone already working with that. Um, so we get donated books and magazines we have. So our Christmas wish list is having other non-monetary donations. So um, a vehicle to be able to transport clients. Um, a handicapped one would be amazing. Um, also having land or uh, other items that are on our wish list um, would be great. That's one way to be involved. Um, another way to be involved is come to our gala. Our superhero gala was amazing that we had in 2019. So coming to our gala is a great way to be involved. Um, and then board of directors. Maybe you love what you've heard today and wanna to be a part of this and you have read through our vision and our mission statements in you really are, you want to be that person. Um, you can apply to be a board member. So we have some board openings. Um, and I love hearing people's stories. So uh, if you are a police officer or a firefighter, um, maybe a social worker um, or even a nonprofit, and you notice the gap issues, Talk to me. I'd love to have a meeting because that is one way for us to help fine tune filling the gaps because that's what I want us to be is how do we fill the gaps of those that fall through um, the different agencies and that don't meet requirements. I want to be able to make sure we catch them. If there are people who want to help fill those gaps, can they volunteer with New Hope? Um, yes, there's different volunteer. Not as many because we are not built, but um, 
one of the extraordinary things I saw in uh, my first nonprofit, uh, which was called Gravit Gardens, was a community that came together. So as you look through our mission statement and our program goals, this isn't about what I can do or what about what New Hope can do. What we are building is what our community can do as we come together. One of my favorite pieces as we're building for the phase one is the Old West Fairway. And in the Old West Fairway, we are building empty buildings for people and companies, um, corporations like PepsiCo, um, to be able to say, hey, we have a team and we want to take one room and create the music room. And our community is wonderful at giving items um, when they donate items. So maybe music instruments will be donated into us. Um, we have another agency that is a local gym and they want to teach uh, fitness classes. So they'll take one and then their team can design the inside. And that's what community coming together. Um, our barn um, which is already in our phase one uh, for animal husbandry, will be an Amish barn raising project. So maybe you're listening and you're a contractor or you are the head of your own company and you're like, this would be a great team building event or we would love to do the extreme makeover for one of the Old West Fairways. Contact me because as we get commitments, those places are secured and um, we keep in contact with those donors and um uh, volunteers to be able to get prepared for when we actually build those sites. So in phase one, while our contractors are building our school and our group homes, the Old West Fairway will be basically a shell and then our teams can come in in extreme makeover fashion which I love. <laughs> yeah, I love it too. That's a very cool idea. It's a unique way that I wouldn't have even thought of. How So if people can just go to the website, is that how they can contact you if someone is listening and thinks that they could fit this? Yes, uh, definitely reach out by website and or just call. Call or text or come visit me at our new office in 2020. Um, we're moving stuff in, but if you have a dire need right now as um, an agency or a client, just go ahead and call. Uh, we'll work something out, but our office is officially open January 1. So... Um, yeah, those are great ways to volunteer and be a part. Um, I love to see what people have available. Um, again, back to my garden project, I remember the first 24 hours of us coming together as a team and, and the land that was offered by the city and a private donor, he offered us the land. It was in his family trust. And within 24 hours, we had the fencing that we needed to fence it. And then an old farmer brought his tractor and he tilled the land for us and then the school came and the school we taught the children how to grow the plants every year that was a big thing in the spring and then the community would have the plant day and the mayor who was in a wheelchair would come out and barbecue the whole day for all our volunteers and that's what it's about it's bringing community this isn't something I want to build on my own I'm looking for the partners that say I love this idea this is what I have how can we use it and taking the strengths of our community members that aren't called to be the foster parents. Maybe that's not their place, but they love to be a part and they want to do a project with their family. I take ideas, I write them down and we implement them. It's really about bringing leadership. And in the same model of what I hope our community comes together to do is what I want to do for the least of us. And the least of us are those that can't get services, those that are with disability struggling um, or with mental health illness that just feel like there's no one there for them and seeing what their giftings are and bringing them up and letting them use their ideas. Yeah. That's what it's about. I think Northern Colorado is definitely the right place <laughs> to do this. We have a great community here, and it's been so exciting to hear about New Hope Youth Ranch. Can't wait to see how it continues to grow and foster even more. So thank you so much for coming in today. You're welcome. And if anybody wants to see the plans, they can stop by my office. We have not shared them on site, but um, like I said, there's a lot of different needs that we have, and everyone has a calling and a gifting. And so we're looking for them, contractors, whatever, who wants to be a part of the, the different pieces. Again, that was Marisol Jackson, the executive director of New Hope Youth Ranch. If you would like to find more information about it, you can visit our station apps or websites under Tuned In to NOCO or visit www.NewHopeYouthRanch.org.